Hey guys, by now you may have seen my English starter build guide where I show an easy English rush against hardest AI Roos. In that video, I asked you to leave comments of what you would like to see next. I'm hoping to take real world examples of civilization matchups that you struggle with on the map that you provide me with so I don't have to guess. I want to know your Civ, I want to know the Civ you struggle with and on which map and the strategy you struggle with. And I'll try to come up with a counter strategy and a build order that fits that situation. Chronic problems are better than singular problems because it'll help you more often. There's someone in Twitch that already gave me the first push to another build order. Cakechase1 said that he struggles with Chinese on open maps like Dry Arabia into English, specifically the unit composition of longbowmen and men at arms. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a build order that I think is going to be most suitable to dealing with the English longbowman and men at arms build. Let's begin. First thing we do is make an imperial official. We send five villagers to a straggler tree and one to a mill. We take our scout, we rally all sheep onto us, and we deposit with a right click that we drag towards the mill. We queue up villagers, and when the mill is halfway done, we start culling sheep and we supervise the mill before it's finished. Then we take all lumber villagers, we go to the mill, and we finish the mill with all lumber villagers. They will deposit 60 wood because it's being supervised, even though they only just gathered 50 wood. And they will even start generating five gold in taxes on that mill. We then take a house and we build a house two slots away from the mill to allow for future farming position around the mill. Once we have eight villagers on food, we start sending new villagers to gold and start gathering gold there. I like to put my Imperial Official in Control Group 3 and I usually will leave Automatic Tax Collection on. Now you see the tax coming in. So now that we've done our starting build order, and it is a bit more complicated for Chinese than for English, though every build order can be better with some meticulous planning and approach. Now that we've started our build order, let's talk about English aggression, longbowmen, men at arms. Men at arms are those kind of units that don't really have a counter in Feudal Age. It is better to see your game against men at arms compositions as a battle of macro tactics rather than micro tactics. Horsemen lose to the spearmen and men at arms inside men at arms longbow compositions. You can mass horsemen for on only for so long, and then you're going to need to take a different approach. Archers can beat longbows in big enough numbers, but if he has men at arms, you're going to take so many hits from his men at arms, and it is going to hurt. We're going to put four on gold, and then the next goes to wood onto a lumber camp. We check with Control Shift A, that's my hotkey for all units on the map. I have three sheep carcasses left. We're going to bring back sheep from this corner of the map, and then we're going to scout what he is doing. So men at arms, as I said, need to take a macro tactic approach to be dealt with. That is flank, deflect, delay, kite and out tech. We cannot out value beat them. Okay, we have enough to go feudal. Let's do it. I'm going to go feudal with Barbican of the Sun right here to protect my wood line. I am not in a rush to finish the Barbican of the Sun. After all, most English players these days go for Dark Age farming into a strong farm economy. And I'm going to send my scout now. I'm going to stop scouting for sheep. Well, let's do a little bit more. They go for a Dark Age farm economy. And then they play off of that. And so they will have a very strong economy. And uh, they tech a lot later than they used to. So you don't need to tech too quickly either. We're just doing the one villager on Barbican. 
Now we're gonna add a second Imperial official. We're gonna build a house with gold villagers as we usually do. And we're gonna kill all these sheep with Ctrl F right click. Ctrl F right click, Ctrl F right click, Ctrl F right click. So now all the sheep are more dead, which is good. So that you won't have five villagers trying to slay one sheep together. Our new Imperial official is out. He's gonna be tax collecting. Now we have enough wood and gold for wheelbarrow. We're going to get wheelbarrow. And now it's time to scout what is going on. If we're playing against a ladder English player, we will see Council Hall in a, in a kind of state of progress right now. We don't know exactly what state of progress, but it is going to be in a state. We're making our third Imperial official now, and it is going to supervise lumber or gold the first longbows, okay, there we go. Council Hall, let's just take this as the reality. Council Hall is at 80% and against most English players, you'll see a couple of Dark Age farms and he'll probably have wheelbarrow. Okay, Imperial official finishes. We're gonna supervise the wood. It's worth supervising anything with five or more workers. So we're not supervising gold right now. The first longbows must be dealt with via a couple of horsemen. Horsemen require mostly food and a bit of wood. So we gotta make sure that we're well provided in the food department, which is nicely done via this. It is also most likely wise to play for professional scouts into English, as it can be tough to have enough food at home. And we are going to stay on a single town center without Song Dynasty. Otherwise we will delay too much our we will delay too much our castle age. As I said, we must take a delay deflect approach against English. He is, he is already feudal. We're gonna have to do some walling, but oh my God, it's dry Arabia. We can't wall anything. So let's make an outpost on the gold right here. Maybe right here, outpost on the gold. We're gonna make a village on the wood as an escape. And we're making a couple of horses here for potential longbows. Okay, now we are going to get the professional scouts upgrade. It's being supervised, so it'll finish really fast. We're gonna make some. Uh, we're gonna make some uh, scouts. Three scouts in total. Outpost is finished. It's gonna allow us to see and react. There is another scout. Supervising the scouts here. Professional scouts is almost done. Let's pick up deer and bring them back. And now let's send all future villagers towards gold. And we're gonna pro scouts pick up. Make as many horsemen as you need for the initial longbows. Now that we have finished four scouts, we're gonna supervise the gold and put a sixth villager on gold. We then do Z formation for the scouts. We click here and then shift to right click on the mill. Once we have six villagers on gold, as well as an Imperial official, we can make our final official. Actually, let's not make an official. Let's send everything huh? here. Shift click and then away. That's how to do it. We're now going to prioritize gathering from deer as deer gathering is faster. If I can click them properly. Okay. Now our composition against what he's doing. And of course, there's probably more aggression now. We should make some towers. We'll try to avoid arrow slits. Because arrow slits needs us to gather stone and it's really gonna slow us down. Okay, let's get hunting techniques as well. We get faster gathering from deer. We'll bring back the carcasses. We have five horsemen right now. Let's bring these carcasses back. Hop, hop. Okay. All good. 
Now, we're almost on our way to castle. We're gonna make barracks. Barracks. Once we start castle, we heavily go out of the food economy for the time being. There's his attack. Okay. Astronomical clock tower. Keep in mind that when you move your imperial official out of the way via building a building, he actually stops supervising and starts tax collecting. That is a bit strange, but it is how it is. So check that you're not moving him out of the way. Uh, we're going to make a new lumber camp, supervise it, make a third barracks. Three barracks should do it. And now we're going to send far more to wood so that we can afford... Uh, uh, so that we can afford some nest of bees. Nest of bees palace guards will be our composition. We immediately start three palace guards. It's ten minutes, not too bad of a time to be making palace guards. And we can do some tax pickups. Okay, this is where our palace guards come out. Hopefully it is on time. Uh, this is the composition we want to be having. And once we have wood, we'll make a nest of bees as well. And we just try to stabilize. It's not going to be this smooth because you're going to be harassed from every angle by longbows uh, normally. But I think this is probably the right way uh, to deal with it. Let me know how it goes. So this is how we deal with food problem, pro scouts, with horsemen hopefully creating space for that. Making this a piece, palace guards. Now, once you, if you actually get to this point, you're super solid because you're gonna get a blacksmith, uh, you're gonna get a uh, another imperial official. With the other imperial official, you're going to be able to collect more taxes because we got shit ton of taxes in the mill here 168 we got 40 in the gold mine we got enough here if you're really comfortable you can bring back and then re-supervise like this you're gonna see me do that but you may be too busy for that then if he is not yet to his uh, castle age eventually palace guards are gonna kick ass you're gonna get Iron Undermesh upgrade, and then it's time for you to become the aggressor. Take all your palace cards out of the group, click them, shift around the base, send and forget like this, so that he doesn't see them coming. Send different palace cards to different places, like so, with shift clicks. And then you can start to do th cool things like EQ, make a monastery, put in a control group, uh, put it on a relic. Wait, where's the relic? Huh? Where's the... Is there a relic here? Oh, there. In the cart. <laughs> Very realistic relic. Nice done. Devs. Uh, and we can also take our scouts and, of course, pick up more and more deer. Because it's going to go fast at this point, guys. We're going through food fast. Luckily, we're also next to berries, so we can diversify a bit if we like. We have nested bees, we have palace guards. Keep in mind, he may go heavily into palace guards when you have nested bees, because, you know, why not? So, you can get melee armor, but generally speaking, ranged armor is the most valuable. When you amass palace guards, then attack, then melee armor. So just keep that in mind. Okay, I think this is the competition you wanna be having. We got Nesta Beast, we got Palace Guards, we're doing counter harass. They came in from every side because we did shift clicking. You can click them on villagers if you like. And that's it. Hopefully this will work for you. Once you get to the stage, you can really do anything. You can, I mean, you got a lot of wood, so obviously you can start doing farming if you like. Right. Um, I mean, it's really as crazy as you can make it now. You can make a second town center if you like. You can try to go all in if you like. All kinds of options. But that's the base. 
Again, you are going to be <clears throat> cracking your voice now and then. That's totally normal. It doesn't make you any less of a man, nor what does it mean anyway, being a man. Hey, this one is also in a card. That's so sick. Uh, you're going to sometimes find that uh, you're going to lose villagers to longbows. This is bad. It's not good at all. But can't always be helped. Good luck with it, Kate Chase, and let me know how it goes. And everyone else watching. GG. Well, actually, I'm supposed to win the game, right? Because I, I went to go win the other game. So, yeah, let's go win. Probably have to upgrade Siege Engineering then, don't I? Ah, Network of Castles upgrade, way too good. Uh, can I convert AI? I wonder. I wonder. Well, I don't have to go for the victory, it's fine. You believe me. I can win. 